Ευχαριστούς. Uh, this lecture was supposed to be in English, so if everybody understands Greek, I can do it in Greek or English, whatever you prefer. No answer. Oh, curious? You don't, you don't mind? You sure? I can do it in English. I mean, it's supposed to be in English, so. Ό,τι πρόβλημα έχετε μπορώ να το πω και στα αγγλικά φάντας. Εγώ τότε θα το κάνω στα αγγλικά, επειδή έτσι έχουμε ανακοινώσει, αν δεν σας πειράζει. Οκ, so, what I'm going to talk about today, I'm sorry, is the improvisation and its functions between the fusion of Eastern and Western music. First of all, I have to clarify what Western music and Eastern music is all about. Eastern music ranges, actually, no, I'm going to start this differently. Um, Eastern music has the idea nowadays that uh, they are, uh, these are music traditions that range from the Arabic world, uh, the, uh, the Asian nations, China, uh, even uh, Japan, um, Slavic music, Balkan music, and all that. That's supposed to be Eastern, which is, you know, quote unquote, uh, the Western music we, you know, know everybody knows is uh, classical music, contemporary music, uh, pop music, which is new, fairly new, jazz music, which I'm going to be talking about a lot today, uh, and um, some traditions, uh, European traditions, which they're fairly new uh, compared to uh, Eastern traditions, and some American uh, traditions in music, which is even newer than the European ones. Um, because I'm not even 35 years old yet, uh, the music I'm into very, very much is jazz. That's, that's what I studied. And um, my master's degree was in, in, in Arabic music. So from, for 12 years now or so, I've been trying to fuse uh, those particular musics. But uh, the thing I'm, I'm going to talk about is uh, applies to all music. You can fuse any music nowadays. Um, three strong points on the fusion on, on Eastern and Western music is for nowadays, again, uh, is um, the, uh, the modal ways of any music. Any music in the world, even, even uh, Eastern or Western music, has uh, modes that it uh, circulates on. What I mean by that is that uh, usually they have a set of, of notes, of tones. Uh, it doesn't have to be um, the notes we know from Western music. I mean, you know, the 12 notes we know from music. It can be any tone. Uh, but usually they have norms that they uh, step on. Like Indian music has the ragas. It has three or four tones that they are particular in every scale. And then all the others are, uh, uh, you know, not exactly the notes we know. Uh, or in Arabic music, uh, we have more notes than 12. We have, um, well, some theorists say 24, some theorists say 26, 27. In Turkish music, there are theorists that say that uh, they can divide the octave in 1,060 whatever pieces, which is, it's not heardable anyway. Uh, but in theory, you know, it can work. And then some um, uh, classical composers, classical meaning, you know, uh, classical music, even though the 20th century romanticism, they have tried to um, interpolate microtones into their music. But mainly it has been experimental. It hasn't, it's not a tradition for classical music or contemporary music to, to use this kind of uh, microtone setting and stuff. Uh, so if we take, for example, Arabic music, um, they have a set of tones uh, I think the number is really high up. They have uh, uh, around 170-something modes that they use. Uh, some of them we use too. Uh, we used to use them as they were. Now we have, because of the buzuki, it became a fret uh, instrument, so uh, we have the notes of the Western scale. And uh, it's not, uh, you know, the, the semitones are not in use in Greek music. Uh, mainly the traditional uh, people and the Byzantine uh, musicians use them. 
but usually they play uh, fretless instruments. Uh, well, this uh, modes that all those musicians, all those traditions uh, use, usually they use them in order to create a song. There is, um, uh, because all those, all those uh, traditions uh, mainly are on the song, and the improvisation is used as, as a composition device to, uh, to write a song, to compose a song. Uh, there is this um, uh, great musician and, and historian and the, uh, theoretic of uh, the eighth century in the Arabic world uh, called Al Spahani, who uh, he had some anecdotes. He, he, wrote, he wrote the Kitab al Aghani, the great book of songs for the Arab world. And uh, he had some anecdotes uh, written on the first pages of that book, which is actually, it's not one book, it's 30 volumes of songs of that uh, era. Uh, and he has a really nice anecdote um, explaining how improvisation works uh, as a composition instrument in that, in that uh, time and actually nowadays too. He says <coughs> that there were two musicians uh, discussing about stuff and he says, how do, you, how do you compose a song? And the other one says that I ride my camel for five days to go to Baghdad or something and then I hit the Ika, the, the rhythm cycle on my saddle singing the lyrics in, in the makam, in the mode that I, that I prefer at that moment. And I, I keep doing that over and over again till the song and, and the rhythm and, and the makam comes together. So what this man is actually doing is he pro he's improvising on the lyrics, on the music, on the mode, on, on given tones, and then on, on a given uh, rhythm, which in Eastern traditions, I have to say, they're actually cycles. They don't, they don't divide up in order to recompose like the Western music musicians do. It's uh, when we say the rhythm malfuf is the rhythm malfuf. It doesn't mean five, four, 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 or anything like that. It means malfuf. Uh, the Western musician will break it down and say that is five plus one plus four plus five eights or whatever, and then combine it again so he can work it out the, the way he knows. So uh, usually uh, all those traditions use improvisation to compose a song. Some quote unquote good improvisation stays and it becomes a hit of, of the era of the 8th century, but we're talking about now, then and whatnot. Uh, because now, um, because of this uh, tradition, or, oral tradition, uh, in uh, the, 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 the starts of the, of the 19th century, the 18th century mostly, um, uh, because uh, slaves were brought in, into uh, the United States uh, and they were mainly from Africa or uh, other parts of the world, but mainly Africa. All those uh, modes and all those um, uh, traditions came in uh, to be in the, in, the, in the soil of the United States. Uh, because all those people, they didn't have actually a formal tra uh, training in music or anything. They just sang what they knew and they just used their, their uh, traditional uh, modes and traditional rhythms that they knew because they were born into it. Uh, they started singing in the fields, and this is a really known story. And uh, with time, they started using Western instruments, like the trumpet, who was easy to maintain and find. I'm sorry. Or the guitar or drums that they used a lot uh, because of their uh, own tradition.